Hi, I had a couple things to share with the community, with the Flat Earth community. First, I wanted to talk about the apparent sun versus the actual sun in the Flat Earth model, as well as some Southern Hemisphere considerations for our research. First, I wanted to go over some pictures. This is from a high altitude balloon. This is from an airplane. This is a sunset somewhere, and this is from Haleakala, which is a mountain in Maui. And I just wanted to show how this, either this or this, or any sun that we see in our sky, looks different to me than this one. And it makes sense to me that if you know these suns are magnified in a way in our atmosphere and representing an apparent sun versus you know an actual sun that's somewhere up higher. So I was at a salon and came across these lamps. It was a little bit synchronistic how it happened, how I happened to be here because I had been thinking about this problem and how it could possibly work and I was, you know, questioning it. It was on my mind a lot. And then I ended up at this salon. So here is the actual light and you can see below it there's another light and in the photo it kind of looks like it's reflecting off this back side but in actuality this light is floating in the middle so it's like an illusory light that you know I could put my hand up in here and touch this illusory light that was floating in midair and I tried to go back to the salon to take a video of this so that you could see it better, but the salon had actually removed these covers. I should go back actually and ask them if they still have them because we could use them for our experiments. But so this is an illusory light that's um, actually floating in midair below the, this actual light. So this could be evidence for the idea of, you know, the apparent sun versus the actual sun. And the other thing to point out here is that there's some lights in the ceiling here and they're reflecting off the top of the dome. So I don't know if this is how it actually works. You know, we still need to do some testing and figuring this out, but I just thought it was really interesting. I just wanted to put it out there to the community for your research and your consideration. You know, it might help other people with what they're already working on. So the other photo I have is this one, and you still can't really tell that this is floating in midair. It's going to look to you like that's reflecting off of here, but it's actually a light that's in the center and it's floating in midair. So, um, in this picture, I just wanted to show real quick how, like, if if you had an, an actual sun that's in a chamber, like the Bible describes, you know, I'm not saying it necessarily proves anything or that we need to go by the Bible necessarily to get our evidence, but, um, you know, sometimes the <laughs> what the Bible is describing is, you know, metaphorical, and sometimes it's true. So it's a consideration. And if it was you know, just going a short distance, you know, then would, if there was an illusory sun, would, if you moved around just a short distance, would an illusory sun go around in here in a bigger circle? And, you know, it still could be going, you know, up and down or um, bigger circles, but uh, it it's possible that it doesn't have to move as much as we think in order to get the illusory sun to make these circle paths in our atmosphere because it's it's our atmosphere is magnifying it somehow and you know if you consider you know rainbows the moon all those you know the sun it, when you're moving around on earth when we when we fall you know you can follow the moon it it moves with you same as a rainbow and the sun seems to be I don't know if it's distance or what it is but it just seems to move like a rainbow so it's just a consideration for you so 
The other thing I wanted to go over was sun calc and the southern hemisphere observations of sunsets. And so this is sun calc and this shows you the um, sunrise and the sunset. So this is a sunrise, this is a sunset, this is midday. And if you'll notice, this is in June, and this is the smallest angle that SunCalc will produce on this map for the sunrise and sunset. So if you go to December, you know, it goes all the way out here. It makes a really wide, obtuse angle. And then, you know, it gets smaller and smaller throughout the year. And uh, so I think June was the smallest angle. So that's the smallest angle possible. Let me make sure that it wasn't May. No, it was June. Yeah, June was the smallest. So, so now you can see where the sunset is supposed to be in Auckland. So even if you move this back, you know, say your obs observation is, you know, somewhere else, it's, you know, it doesn't move the angle. So I have some pictures of some sunsets in Auckland. You know, I just recently moved here from, I'm an expat from the United States, so I don't have an accent, but I observed something and I need to share this with the community because it was really confusing to me. So here's a sunset to the right of the Auckland Tower. Here's another sunset to the right of the Auckland Tower. Right of the Auckland Tower. Right of the Auckland Tower. Okay, here's one to the left of the Auckland Tower, but it's still really close. So, you know, it has to do with seasons where the sun is going to set. It's going to set in different sections depending on the season. So here's the sky tower in Auckland. It's right here in the center of Auckland. And if we go back to Sun Calc, so that's where I had the Sun Calc. So even if the observation place is moved back a little bit, you're not going to get this angle to be the right of the Auckland Tower. There's no way. Okay? That that's just not happening. So the sun calc is completely wrong for at least for New Zealand. I don't know about other places in the southern hemisphere, but it's not matching observations at all. So I was really confused about this when I first moved here because I was taking a ferry from you know somewhere here to Auckland and I observed the sunset to the right of the Auckland Tower and I was I knew that the Auckland Tower was to the north so I was completely disoriented I was feeling completely discombobulated about that situation because I've always lived on a west coast with the sunset over the ocean so when I saw the sun setting to the north I just it really bothered me. I was, how can this possibly be that it's setting to the north? It was just really, really confusing to me. And I had a conversation with somebody here about gardening and they were talking about, you know, where to place things so your garden grows the best. And he was saying, you know, here in, here in New Zealand, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. And I didn't want to correct him and say, well, it does that everywhere. But the point was of me bringing up that story was that they do recognize that something is different here in the southern hemisphere than in the northern hemisphere. He just wasn't using the right terminology to describe what was different about it. So, um, you know, they're aware that something isn't quite right with where the sun is setting. And I'm not the only one that observes it. You know, not everybody has traveled to 
the northern hemisphere versus the southern hemisphere. You know, they might have traveled, but you don't really observe things if you're not living there. You might think, oh yeah, there's something different, but if you're not living there, it might not, you might not notice it. You just might not think about it. So here's somebody that says the sun still rises from the east, but this is a blog by somebody from New Zealand. So she traveled to Malaysia and she was saying when one bought a house in Malaysia, he or she will see to it that the house is facing east so that the house gets much more of the sun, rising sun, which is not as hot as the setting sun. That said, well, so she goes on to explain you know, that it's different when buying a house in Malaysia, what you want to look for. In New Zealand, what one looks for in a house is very different. Well, we heard about this and somewhat knew this, but until today, it did not really hit me. In New Zealand, the fact that the sun rises from the east and sets in the west has holes as big as the sun all over it. When one buys a house here, it is important that it faces north. That is because over here, the sun does not travel the half circle over your head but takes a rather gentle curve rising from the east and setting in the north. I also learned in school that at noon, one can't see your shadow because the sun was over your head. That may be true elsewhere, but you may need to learn lean like the Tower of Pisa to get no shadow here. So I'm not the only one that notices it, and it is different here, and Sankalk is wrong. <laughs> so besides that, uh, there's another consideration for the Southern Hemisphere when you're making sun observations because I noticed that my cell phone does not give me accurate readings all the time for its compass. You know, I'll just have it sitting on a desk and it'll migrate. The, the reading will migrate just having it on a desk, not moving it. So, and I don't I've noticed that it takes a while, you know, to calculate which direction, and it seems wrong sometimes. It'll tell me a completely off direction. So I had been looking to, into buying a compass and did a little bit of research of what type of compass I should get, but I came across the idea that compasses that are made in the Northern Hemisphere actually don't work in the Southern Hemisphere. So here's the little article that explains this. A compass needle has two ends that are painted different colors with red indicating north. When a compass is in the northern hemisphere, the north end of the needle is pulled down towards the earth. So the south end must be counterweighted to balance it. If a northern hemisphere compass is used south of the equator, the south end of the needle is pulled down instead. Since the south end is already weighted, this pull causes it to drag on the bottom of the compass, resulting in a less than accurate reading. The, a compass designed for the southern hemisphere is weighted differently to avoid this problem. So I just wanted to point that out to everybody when they're doing their sun observations and getting compass readings that that's a consideration you have to take into, into account. So. The other thing I wanted to go over was um, Southern Hemisphere versus Northern Hemisphere star trails. And, you know, there's a lot of videos about that already. I think the best explanation is by P. Brain. He did this video, Anti-Crepuscular Sun Rays Are Key to the Southern Star Rotation. Um, so, let me back this up because he... Has has this little section. rays coming out and they're attached to the sun. We're rotating counterclockwise. And now here we go, continuing to rotate counterclockwise, still rotating. And as you look in the opposite horizon or in the western horizon, the crepuscular rays are now visually rotating clockwise. So he didn't move the direction, he didn't change directions of the spin. And I wanted to explain this uh, a little bit more. So this is another really good video, Flat Earth Star Trails Explained or Reproduced, and he reproduced the star trails with a dome, with a glass dome, and you can see this star trail pattern is the same in this glass dome. So I would recommend this one, Flat Earth Map, Flat Earth Model, um, Star Trails Reproduced. So 
I did a little diagram. Let me start up here. So if you have an observer, you have this spinning, and you have an observer over here, she's going to see this spinning this way. Now if she's sitting over here, and you have it spinning the same direction, and she's looking this direction, she's going to see it going that way. Both, both ends are going that way, right? And then you put her in the center, and if she's looking in this direction, it's going to go this way. And if she's looking in this direction, it's going to go this way. So it's clockwise, counterclockwise. And you're not changing the spin of this. It's still going the same direction. It just depends on which direction you're looking. So you can get a toilet paper roll and put discs on the either end and do this yourself. You just paste them to the end of the toilet paper roll and spin this and then look one way and then look the other way and you'll see that it's going either clockwise or counterclockwise. So does this prove or disprove anything on the flat earth model versus the globe earth model? No, because for the globe model it's the earth spinning and you're just you know looking in either direction and you're seeing either clockwise or counterclockwise. But it's the same on the flat model because instead of the globe spinning, it's the sky spinning. So you're looking this way and it's going that way and you're looking that way and it goes that way. So this is the simplest explanation of the different star trails for the flat earth that I've ever come across. So you don't need anything special. You don't need any vortexes. You don't need, you know, any of that. It's just you're just looking in a different direction. So, you know, if if you're all if all people are facing north, then it's going to look the same to everybody. So, but if you're facing different directions, then it's going to look different to each way you're looking. So, that's all I have for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.